Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my project for the Stencil Girl Creative Team. This is the August, the August project and it is themed passages and I had to think about that and what it means to me. I've been thinking a lot about the passing of time, beginnings and endings and changes that are happening in our world and so I wanted to make something about going through time and going through all these different doors into different experiences. And so I decided to use some stencils that have windows or doors um, as, as their theme. So this first one is from Carolyn Doobie and it is, let's see, L359 Arched Aqueduct. It has a lot of arches in different sizes and they remind me of windows and doors. So I'm, I'm uh, gel printing to make some collage paper to use on my piece. And I'm starting with my six by six gel plate and I'm using a combination of acrylic paint and pan pastel. Pan pastel is a um, fine art product that is a pigment in a powder form. It has something mixed with it that keeps it in these little cakes, but it's, it's really, really creamy, um, not, not too much dust or anything. And I'm applying it to my gel plate using just a, kind of a pouncing padding motion with, with the pastel on a cosmetic wedge. And then I'm picking it back up off the plate onto some thin papers. This is just printer paper with a thin um, layer of acrylic paint. Sometimes I put the acrylic paint down and then I pick up through the holes. Sometimes I just put the stencil right on the plate, put the pan pastel through the holes and then pick it up, you know, take the stencil off and pick up the, the pan pastel with the thin layer of acrylic paint using my brayer. You can usually get more than one print. And the way that you clean off the plate is to put some baby oil on it and then wipe it with like a, um, a kitchen, a kitchen towel or something. It doesn't need to be wet like paper towel. So then I switched to my eight by 10 gel plate. It's a little bit larger for these larger stencils. This one is Door to Heart Nine by Pam Carricker. I don't wanna use the stuff that's on the inside of the stencil. It has this really cute branch with a heart hanging from it. I'm just selecting the parts of the stencil that I want to use. And I put the dark gray and it, it makes the shape of the doorway. And then I'm putting some other colors and blending them in on the inside of the doorway with my pan pastel. So you can select what you wanna use even when you're gel printing, if you use pan pastel, you could also do it with paint, but it's easier with the pan pastel. So then I just put a thin layer of gray paint over it to pick everything up. And this is what you get, which is kind of cool. And then I do another print with some buff titanium paint and it makes a different lighter print, which I end up using on the, pro on the project. Um, but, but I like having options. I like having more than one thing to try out. See, that one's a lot light, lighter. So then I wanna make some larger pieces with the arched aqueduct from Carolyn Doobie again. That's L359 if you'd like to purchase it on the Stencil Girl Products website. And I'm using cool colors mostly. I'm using blues and purples and um, gray, a lot of gray. This, this piece is pretty dark. It, because the, what I'm thinking about is dark. I mean, I'm thinking about being born and then dying and the things that happen in between. That's what this piece is about. And so it's a lot darker than my usual work. I usually am a very bright, cheerful, you know, super bright colors um, type of an artist, but this isn't a super bright color type of a, of a theme. <laughs> so now this one is what's this one called? Uh, Window Ledge by Pam Carricker, S040. And I really like the window shape. I didn't want to use the stuff that was in the window, 
but I wanted it to have an arch top because all my other ones have an arch. And so I took back that door to heart nine stencil and I used the arch on the top of the window it ha as if it has a transom. And then I used the little lines from inside the this window stencil to make to make three little lines like it has a transom, you know, like that's that's what that would look like, I think. So I kind of selected different pieces of the stencil and it's so easy to do with hand pastel. It's so easy to do that. I think easier than doing it with acrylic paint on the gel plate. So I'll end up getting two prints of this one as well, one with the gray and one with the the off-white, the buff titanium acrylic paint for picking up. The pan pastel is fairly opaque, but you do get an effect from what color of paint you pick it up with. So now this one is the um, ATC mix-up that Pam Carriker did. And as you can see, it has some of those same images. It has the this, this same uh, heart doorway and it has the, the same window up, which I don't use it up in the top. Then it also has this other arched one that has a little bird. And I end up using that one. I didn't want the bird, so I didn't stencil the bird. I stenciled around the bird and then I filled it in with some dark um, pan pastel and you know filling in the doorways with the lighter colors as if the light is shining through so I pick one of them up with gray and then I think I do a second one with the off-white again so you get the pro you get the idea of the process for the gel printing collage papers with pan pastel so here are some pictures of some of the papers that I made that's with the aqueduct um, stencil and then this one is with the different doors and windows stencils and that's what I'm going to use for my piece so I'm starting out with the the planar pieces the ones that are made with the arched aqueduct stencil and I want to create a collage background that starts darker at the bottom left corner going to lighter at the upper right corner. So I'm trying to create kind of a, a ombre or gradient going from diagonally from the bottom to the top. So I'm picking out the pieces that I want based on that kind of concept. Um, how dark are they? What color are they? What's the, the tonality of them? And I'm using Lecotex Matte Gel Medium. I'm spritzing the back of the paper and then applying the medium to both the back of the paper and the canvas panel. This is a 11 by 14 flat back canvas panel uh, from Hobby Lobby, it's a master's touch. And then I'm using a scraper tool to smooth down the collage paper. I don't want any bubbles or bumps or creases. And I'm also using a distressed collage brush, which is um, fairly wide and short so I can as I'm going over the topic and press down the paper just to make sure that everything is is adhered well. When you're using this lar this large of pieces of paper, it uh, you do have a lot more chance of um, having bubbles and creases and stuff uh, can be annoying. I'm also wrapping the the extra flaps around to the back. I do this on a, on the deeper canvases, and I just I. I don't know that I'm going to frame this, might just hang it up as it is. So I wanted to make sure that the edges were covered and everything was, you know, real clean looking. Now I do have some tissue paper that I printed at the same time. I was actually picking up paint through the holes of the stencil and this, this goes translucent. So it, it gives me the possibility of having kind of blender pieces. Um, I had a problem there and I, <laughs> <laughs> I peel had to peel out some of the paper it stuck and it, anyway it wadded up it was nasty so that's fine I can touch all this up where my fingers have touched and pulled off some of the paper when you get medium on your hands and then you use your hand to to hold your canvas and it's not yet dry it can the medium on your fingers can stick to the medium on the canvas and it can pull off the paper and that's what happened here on the left hand side but I can touch that up with paint 
So then I have three different sizes and um, designs of these stenciled doorway window type of idea. And I'm attaching them um, going from smallest to biggest, darkest to lightest across the canvas. I've torn around the edges so that they have, they don't have real harsh cut out edges, but more kind of a blender type of edge by, by doing the tearing. And then I'm just taking my fingers and a little bit of paint and touching up and blending some areas with the acrylic paint, same colors that I used for the gel printing. So it's easy to get some blends going on in uh, the gray, the, the black, you know, and then also to touch up some of those places where I was touching the canvas when it was still wet and it got a little bit peeled. This is some Naples yellow uh, acrylic paint that I'm just um, putting on with my fingers as well. Um, I, want, I want the doors to have light coming through as if there's something on the other side that you want to reach. Uh, whatever goal it is you have in your life that you're going to step through this, this door that's going to change you forever. I want it to appear appealing on the other side. So I'm trying to get light shining through. So then I have some photos and where I got these, these are royalty free photos from a place called Unsplash. Um, as if you're not splashing, you're unsplashing.com. <laughs> and it's a great place if you need reference photos or you need photos that you can use in your artwork without any royalties. Um, they do ask that you, that you, if you're going to use them, you tell people about Unsplash. So I'm telling you about it. I took these, I, I changed the sizes, I cropped them and I changed them to black and white so that I would have this, um, tonal look on the photos. I cut them out and I glued them down starting you know with the baby you're born you're born into this world and then um, up at the top was the only place I could find to put that teenager uh, and then maybe you become a mom yourself and you have a little girl maybe you're married and you're retired and then eventually you're you're older and you're moving on so that is all the images that I had. So now I'm mark making with um, a Jerry's Artorama Jumbo Jet pencil. It's a charcoal and charcoal and oil, I think, mixed together pencil. Um, you can blend it a little bit with your fingers. And then I'm writing my words with a acrylic paint pen, which is made by Uni Posca. This is the fine tip. And I'm writing in my own handwriting. I don't do this very often. I don't like it, <laughs> but I wanted to put this quote on here. Uh, I thought it went exactly with what I was trying to say with this piece. So I did it in a couple layers of the, the white paint. And now I'm going to add in some more color. I've got out my pen pastels again, and I have some soft tools, S-O-F-F-T, which, um, is made by Pan Pastel. Interesting thing about Pan Pastel, if you get it somewhere where you don't want it, you can erase it with an eraser. So like I got a little bit of that lavender on the elderly lady and I'm gonna need to erase that. I, I got a little bit of this blue onto my my mom with child person. Uh, but I'm, I'm working on the background right now, trying to add some color and interest to the background. I keep going around that top one and trying to get the edge darker and it, um, I end up having to use the I'll, I'll, actually some black because if you recall, I put matte medium on this and I didn't put a pastel ground over the top of it. So the pastel doesn't adhere as well to that, that more of a slick medium. I could have gotten out the, the uh, ground, which is kind of basically a medium that has a sandy texture for pastel use but I just didn't I just kept kept going so then I got out some small tool these tools these look like uh, applicators for eyeshadow but they're not they're from the soft tools um, they have a denser foam and I'm coloring in over the top of the grayscale printing on these photos so I don't have to fuss very much about 
highlights and shadows. I just have to make sure that that pastel is thin enough that you can see the grayscale printing through. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm putting it on and then I'm kind of just wiping it back a little bit with my paper towel, which is in my left hand. I'm also going around the edges of the images with a Stabilo All pencil, which is a highly water reactive pencil. And then I'm blending that out with my Pentel water brush. So you get kind of a, a shadow that blends into the background and makes these pieces not appear as if they're stuck on like stickers, but more as if they are part of the piece. I'm also going back and forth using the Jumbo Jet Pencil and the Stabilo Pencil and eventually my white Posca pen again for some uh, sketchy highlights. Um, just working back and forth. When I finish these, this lower portion, I do spray it with some Spectrafix, which is a workable fixative that is a non-aerosol. It's like a pump spray. Just so that when my arm goes over the top of this pastel on the bottom part as I'm working on the top, it doesn't um, smear. And then, of course, you can come back in and work over the top of that type of a fixative. You could also use an aerosol one, but you should take it outside if you're going to do that. There's lots of workable fixatives out there. You just have to pick one. So going back and forth, adding color, um, adding a little bit of, sh of shadow. Like in this case, I used lavender pastel, and then I came back in with the purple pastel and put it in the shaded areas, um, adding color to the hair, uh, adding that outline shadow to make them appear more painterly um, rather than photographs. I think you can tell that they're photographs, but they also... They also blend in well enough that you could think that they were drawn or painted. So that's that's the look I was going for. I added a strong highlight to the blocks on the left-hand side of that middle piece because I thought I needed to bring in some of that light from the top. The top upper part is very much lighter and I needed to bring some of that in. So this was a really fun project. Um, my friend Peg Robinson and I, we pick the same stencils and then we both do a project with them. So on the blog post, you'll see what she did with the same stencils. And she also will have a video as well. So her piece is different than mine. And it's fun to see what two different people do with the same exact stencil girl stencils. So be sure to check hers out as well. Not sure what else I have to say about this. I'm just coloring with the pastel, um, adding color here and there as I see fit. I, I give the old lady a blue dress. I think blue is a common color. <laughs> I wanted everything to blend together. I've got the same purples, the same pinks, the same blues from the pastel going all through the piece and the same gray and gray blue. I don't really use any warm colors except for that yellow, which is a very pale yellow that I think looks like the glow of light. Oh yeah, I do have to kind of draw in the feet on the teenager. She's wearing white sneakers and um, the picture was cut off because she was sitting on something and her feet were behind it. So I had to draw a little bit of the feet back in. Not a big deal. I made all the characters female because I'm female and it's kind of, you know, the story of life. I haven't gotten to the cane, the cane uh, wielding lady age yet. <laughs> I'm closer to the couple, um, past the teenager and the mom. My kids are, are older than that little girl. So I'm, I'm more closer to the one on the left, but still enjoying life. Although I am thinking about the passage of time and changes and things that are happening. So that's what my piece is about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can leave a comment or a question below. You can subscribe to this channel. You can turn on notification bells so that you know when a new fresh video comes out. And all those things help other people find this channel who might be interested in the same things that you are. So thanks so much for watching. That's it for me. Bye-bye.